Welcome everyone, I'm Exceptional, and I hope you are too. Welcome back to Stardew Valley. We're coming into year two after an incredibly successful first year in the valley. At the end of winter, I was trying my darndest to set us up for success in spring, but as we saw in the last video, uh, it didn't really do much. But that doesn't matter, in spring the world is green and vibrant and beautiful. We have so much to do, let's jump in. Ah, uh, there's nothing like rolling out of bed in the morning as your money counter shoots up over a million. Thanks, Past Egg, and oh, as we step outside, look at it. Well, first I guess cutscene. This is Kent. He's Jody's husband, and he's just gotten back from dot 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 overseas. He's being a good, polite neighbor, introducing himself and letting me know that I have another person I need to figure out gifts for. The first order of business is checking out our mailbox where we have a notice informing us that the price of raw materials at Robin and Clint's shop have increased. I'm gonna be trying to not buy as much wood this year as a result of that, but let's be honest. We all saw what was accomplished in the first year, I'm hoping that price won't be an issue. And alright, it's time to start prepping the fields. Unfortunately, all of that hoeing, watering, and retaining soil that I fertilized with yesterday did absolutely nothing. So let this egghead be the first to tell you, don't do that. I've had a couple of strawberry plants growing in the greenhouse, and I've been turning all of those strawberries into seeds using the seed maker. I have enough seeds to cover the top field in those, but we're gonna have to get something else for the rest of the farm. I then head over to Pierre's where I'm gonna be buying a bunch of seeds. I'm gonna be buying a thousand cauliflower seeds because that's what our fields are gonna be filled with at the start of the month anyway, but I'm also making sure to grab every single other seed that Pierre has available. Especially now that we have the greenhouse, it's nice to have all of these seeds on demand because they are not available out of season. At least, not yet. The rest of the day is spent repeating all of the work that I did on Winter 28 and planting as many cauliflowers in the ground as I can possibly get done. By the end of day one, the top fields are filled and the bottom field has a sizable crop of cauliflower growing. And the morning of day two is spent expanding the cauliflower crop to all of our iridium sprinklers. A flaw in my ability to look ahead is about to reveal itself. I have all the materials in the world to craft more sprinklers, but I need more battery packs. And trust me when I say, we need more battery packs. At the end of the day, we have a bunch of blackberry wine available, and it isn't super valuable to be honest, but I just wanted to keep our kegs working. I'm actually pretty much out of things to put in them aside from some coffee from the greenhouse. Good news at the end of the day though, the early season push to get everything set up for spring is pretty much done. It's time to shift the priority back to getting the community center done, and I already have the truffle from the pig. I'm gearing up for a fishing adventure to go and get that darn sunfish tomorrow. On the morning of day three, this is unfortunately the last of what I had to process through the kegs. It's a little unfortunate, but they will be sitting idle for a few days anyway. Chores done, let's head south and start our adventure trying to catch a sunfish. I cast my line, there's a fish on it, and it's done. We've got a sunfish. Um, fishing adventure over? The reason I came down here to fish was actually so that I could visit Marnie when she opened at 9 o'clock. I was only here to pick up a couple of auto grabbers, which will automatically collect all of the produce that our animals produce. Well, everything within the respective barn and coop. It won't say pick up truffles, which the pigs are finding outside of the barn. I also happen across this animal catalog, which allows us to access Marnie's shop when she's not around. Given that I'm a little bit rich right now and have definitely been caught a few times by her yoga schedule every Tuesday morning, I'm definitely picking that one up too. I put one in the coop and one in the barn, and as you can see on my toolbar, we have a sunfish and truffle. I only get a little distracted on my way to the community center to turn these in and finish that off. I think I might have overdone it slightly, completing both of these bundles at the same time though. As you can see in the little cutscene here, all of the Junimos are celebrating while the other one is trying to put up the star from the fish bundle. The Junimos have one final message for us. The last bundle. Farewell, egghead. That completes one of the most satisfying goals in this playthrough. With the community center done, we're gonna be opening up a little bit more of the world, but a couple of things have to happen first. Ah, just take a second to appreciate it though. Beautiful. Repairing the community center is actually gonna change a couple of the behaviors of the people in the town. Now that it's repaired, they actually do hang out in it and use it like a community center. It's super cool. Since I spent the entirety of winter pretty much in the mines, I needed a small break and decided to keep fishing. 
We don't have any more fish submission goals, but in order to get the master angler achievement, we have to catch at least one of every fish. There are some unique ones, ironically enough in the mines, which I was trying to avoid on floors 20, 60, and 100 of the Stardew Valley mine. I spend most of the next day as well pursuing the same goal. There's another legendary fish we can catch now that we have the sewers unlocked, so I head down there and we have another cutscene. It turns out that the dwarf character from the mines and Krobus don't really get along that well. They're fighting it out when the wizard shows up, explains to them that the elemental wars have passed. There's no reason to be feuding any longer. They aren't exactly the best of friends by the end, but they've both agreed to move forward peacefully. They have nothing against each other directly, after all. The reason I'm down here, though, is to find the legendary fish, which again just happens to be the first thing I hook. I then catch the legendary mutant carp and go to explore the little tunnel access that we have on the northwest part of the map. We're blocked by a magical barrier, so we'll check that out later. Since I finished off two rooms at the exact same time in the community center, I actually had to wait an additional day for the community center completion to take full effect. Because we completed the community center, everybody in town is just that little bit happier with us, and I've got a lot of new recipes in the mailbox. When you get to a high enough friendship level with all of the townspeople, they will send you recipes as well as random gifts in the mail. Scrolling through a bunch of them, ah, this is the one I was looking for. Willie is letting us know that we've unlocked the back room of his shop and we should go check it out when we have a chance. This is what I was really gunning for completing the community center. But uh, yeah, remember those battery packs. I head to town and it's time for one of my favorite cutscenes in this game. The community center is done and the village is celebrating. Fun fact, now that the community center is repaired, the clock on the front of it will actually be accurate to the in-game time. We head inside and the camera pans across, showing every single community member here and enjoying the center. It's a pretty jovial atmosphere until we hear a grumble 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 from the door. Morris comes in, ah, oh, my sales have been plummeting, where have my customers gone? Pierre confronts him and we the player have a choice. Let's see, be reasonable or settle this the old fashioned way? <laughs> yeah, old fashioned way. Morris offers a 75% off coupon to everybody in the town and Pierre puts up his dukes. Morris says Pierre is primitive, Pierre says Morris is scared, and oh, you gotta love the schoolyard baloney. Pierre then insults Joja Corp and that's when Morris kicks into gear. I'm gonna have to blur this out because this fight is so brutal. You're weaker than your fresh produce selection. Yeah, well you throw punches like Joja, quantity over quality. Pierre finishes the battle with a sick uppercut, holy man, and tosses on the Thug Life glasses. I love this game. Ah, the next stop is Willy's, where I'm gonna be waiting extremely patiently for him to open. Once inside, we can go check out what's in his back room. It's time for another cutscene as Willy reveals his boat to us, just his boat. It's actually his dad's boat and he's been wanting to fix it but doesn't have the materials. Well, hey Willy, I got stuff. The material list is going to be three turn-ins of 200 hardwood, five iridium bars, no problem, and five battery packs. Like I said, we're completely out of battery packs. All of them have been used for iridium sprinklers in our fields. And this is the point in spring of year two where I lose the plot a little bit. And because we don't have battery packs and I essentially just have to wait until stormy weather to find some, I didn't really know what to do with myself. You can get battery packs as a monster drop from Iridium Bat, so I guess I'll just go mining. You have to appreciate the irony too, I just spent like 50,000 gold on auto grabbers and immediately find one in the mines. So the question really became what to do with myself. There's always chores to be doing, including keeping up on our greenhouse, our coffee is ready every other day, as well as all of our fruit bearing trees have grown up on the back row. They'll be producing for us as well now, and the reason I like them in my greenhouse is because they'll produce all year round, whereas if they're planted outside, they will only produce during their respective season. Then, in a beautifully executed egghead thought process, I realize, hmm, battery packs come from lightning rods. The lightning rods, of which all of mine are sitting in a chest because after reorganizing the farm during winter, I never put them back out or provided scarecrow coverage. What can I say? I'm not perfect. But once those are in place, it really does become a question of filling time until we can gather those battery packs. My plan extended onto Ginger Island, but uh, that kind of fell apart. 
Day eight is a rainy day, and it's just a rainy day. No thunder today, so no battery packs. I pick up a new quest from the community board for Gus. He needs 24 eggs. That shouldn't be a problem at all. And I decided to check out the Jojo location now that they've been chased out of town. There's actually another bundle within this building that we can now complete. It requires much more advanced materials, honestly, most of which we already have access to. Right now, though, I'm not going to be calling this a priority. And then it's pretty much just filling time in the mines, waiting for battery packs and hunting down as many of those purple bats as I can find. Don't get me wrong, being in the mines is a useful thing to be doing right now. I need all of these raw materials eventually, but it's just a little tedious. I've spent so much time in the mines lately. I've been trying to make sure that progress continues in other aspects where we're not waiting for battery packs. Completing the fish tank in the community center gave us access to the pan as well as the ability to pan for ores. As of 1.6, this pan can be updated to have better yields and a chance to immediately cause another panning spot to appear. I don't plan on doing much panning, but this is definitely going to make the small amount that is required a lot easier. Mining, 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 and chores fill the next several days. I've had those auto grabbers set up for a couple of days, so let's check out what they've produced for us. Ah, it's a beautiful thing, and yes, all of the eggs that I'm grabbing out of this thing are counting towards our quest for Gus. He requires that you not only submit 24 eggs, but gather 24 eggs, and it does count coming out of the auto grabbers. Only the first time, though. You can't just put the same egg in 24 times and pull it back out. And on day 10, I decided to come up to the tree farm to check out how those mystic seeds I planted are doing. These mystic trees were unlocked by our foraging mastery, and I'm pretty keen to check out what they have to offer. You can just barely tell, too, that they're quite red because I did use tree fertilizer on these ones. Mystic trees count as wild trees. And I know you're shocked by this, but it's mine, 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 reaping every benefit from that parrot. These infested floors are particularly nice for that. Just look at all that cash. A small little cluster of monsters for two golden mystery boxes, an iridium bar, 3,750 gold, two bombs as well. It feels good. On the morning of day 11, I'm picking up our steel pan, which I'll be resubmitting immediately to be turned to gold, but first it's time to do a little bit of geode processing. Well, these days it's geode and mystery box processing, which I am fine with. I'm finally starting to process my omni geodes as well. I no longer need to use them as currency to get warp totems to the desert. This is definitely going to help us fill out our museum collection as well as we get our first dwarven computer, which once we get our second one, I can finally craft the farm computer. Yeah, we'll come back to that when it's relevant. This museum is definitely starting to fill out. Then the remainder of days 11 and 12 are pretty much spent in the mines, tearing it up. On the morning of day 13, I have something to report that isn't mining, hooray! Our first batch of cauliflower is now done and holy moly, look at that one! Certain crops like cauliflower, melons, pumpkin, and powder melon now in 1.6 can morph into giant crops. This requires the crop to be grown in a 3x3 three three area. Iridium sprinklers have the coverage now that we can get away with a lot of those. Or at least a chance for a lot of those. You need to break them with your axe and it will yield more produce. In this 3x3 three three area, instead of getting the 9 typical cauliflowers, I actually get 17. Heck yeah. If you remember the significance of the 13th of spring from last year, it's time for a festival. I have exactly one goal at the festival this year. I walk like 15 paces in, buy a thousand strawberry seeds, and it's time to go. Catch you later! Despite being at the festival for all of like 30 seconds, the time still advances to 10 p.m., but that should be enough for us to get these seeds in the ground. After all, I'm just replacing all of the cauliflower that I harvested this morning, so these tiles are already hoed and watered. The next morning, the rest of the cauliflower is ready, so I harvest it up and replant the rest of the strawberry seeds. Then after consulting the growth chart online because I didn't feel like doing math, I made a trip to town to Pierre's. I am also this year making more of an effort to speak to the villagers and give them salads as I pass by. With the exception of Krobus, Leo, and Willy, every single townsperson at least likes salads as gifts. It's just a great way for me to start building up some of these relationships because, eh, social stuff, eh. The point of the trip, though, was to buy a bunch of deluxe speed grow from Pierre. I then run around my fields applying it to every single new strawberry plant that we have. It's slightly inefficient to put it on the crop that we planted yesterday, but we will still see one additional yield from it. For strawberries, that is very worth it. 
And as I kept mining at the end of day 14, I decided it was time for a break. I guess I'll spend a little bit more time socializing, but ooh, there's something new I didn't know about. And as a result of not knowing about it, I'm gonna miss out on a little bit of potential from the Desert Festival. We'll get back to that in a second though, my initial goal on the morning of day 15 was to get some of these quests out of my backlog. Because I've been making sure to keep at least a couple of every item that I collect, I'm able to just kind of go through the quests and go through my chests, finding things that people want. I then started a big loop going all the way around the valley trying to turn in all of these items. I ran into a bit of a problem though in that I couldn't find a bunch of the villagers. Where the heck did they all go? During the spring, after unlocking the bus, on days 15, 16, and 17 is the Desert Festival. Here's where everybody went. And I just again cannot help but laugh at the irony that the second I decided I am done with the mines, I am so over this, we get an event that has challenges in the mines. Sweet, new challenges, let's jump in. But first I did want to check out this festival a little bit because I haven't been here before. I gave Emily an apricot and she offers us a makeover. Well, yeah, sure. She kind of ends up turning us into Ted Shackelford, so um, thanks, but no thanks? Despite not having battery packs, I don't feel I have time to monkey around a lot. Let me just put my clothes back on. Thank you, though, bye. I descend into the depths of the mines once again, but this time I'm collecting some of these calico eggs. As you make it lower in the mines and activate shrines which give random effects, you get more egg points. Egg score? I don't know how it works, but at the end of the day, you're able to talk to Gil and get a prize based on your egg score. Cool, and I'm definitely back the next day checking it out again. Day 17 is gonna be the last day of the festival, but before we head out there, I have exciting news. After harvesting them, I popped a bunch of those cauliflowers into the kegs, and this is our first batch of cauliflower juice. Since this is the last day of the festival, I decided to try and spend as many of my calico eggs as I thought would be worth it. Turns out this bender has a magic rock candy, which heck yeah I'm gonna buy, those things are incredible. Another cool thing that I haven't mentioned is the food vendor out here. I have been taking advantage of this every day, and what he does is provide a food buff based on a couple of options that you choose. This food buff, by the way, is on top of your drink and food food buffs. They're additional, you can stack a lot of buffs including this. I go with the rare fruit and uncomfortably spicy combination, which gives plus three luck and plus one speed. At the end of the day, after grabbing our reward from Gil, I decided to go check out those shops, and it's midnight, apparently, that all the villagers turn in and go back home. Well, shoot, okay, let's go talk to the other merchant. I just decided to buy out his stash of mystery boxes and all of the mega bombs that I could afford. For a first crack at this festival, not bad at all. Now that the festival is over, though, I'm back to wondering what to do with myself as we wait for battery packs. I just, I can't seem to keep myself out of the mines because now I'm deciding to go and knock off a few more of those monster hunter objectives. There are a couple enemies that don't show up very often, like these duggies that are only available in the low floors of the Stardew Valley mines. Instead of going up and down the elevator looking for ore, I'm looking for monsters. Actually, if I'm gonna be going after monsters, I should finally tell you what monster musk is all about. I head back to the farm to craft some because it's gonna make our monster hunting just that little bit more efficient. I don't need much help with this, but it makes us smell irresistible to monsters, doubling the amount that spawn on every floor. It's gonna help knock off those monster hunting objectives for sure, but can you see what I mean by this parrot and monster musk? When we're all powered up and uber later, I wanna take a shot at the hard mode mines with Monster Musk and the Parrot just to see how much money we make. Let's be honest, I'll probably die immediately. After the Duggies are complete, it's then to the lower floors to take out Void Spirits. I gotta keep myself busy somehow as I continue waiting for a thunderstorm. Day 19, it's a bunch of the same again, just trying to fill time. Another thing that I became aware of is the book Friendship 101. Since I'm starting to give a care about social relationships, it feels like an incredibly powerful book to get. After we read it, this book is going to increase all of our friendship gains by 10%. It's available as the ninth prize from Mayor Lewis's ticket machine, so I'm definitely gunning for that. And at the Traveling Merchant today, I found a couple of neat things. The bed? Honestly, I can't remember where it came from, but the more exciting part was this Junimo catalog. Furniture catalogs did exist before, but 1.6 has added a bunch of new furniture. This Junimo catalog is gonna give us free access to a whole bunch of Junimo-themed furniture and decorations. Things are looking a little spartan around here, but don't worry, I will decorate eventually. 
Easily, the most exciting part of this entire month, though, is the morning of day 20. It's a rainy day, the strawberries are ready, okay, let's get harvesting. And then it hits. Thunder. Glorious thunder. That means that tomorrow morning, we have battery packs. All right, I just need to keep myself busy today. Stop one is Probus. He's actually really easy once you have a bunch of money to gain friendship with. One of Krobus's loved gifts is a void egg, which he just so happens to sell for 5,000 gold. I buy one and I give it right back to him. He loves it. While I'm down here as well, I'm also gonna be talking to the dog statue. This statue for the cost of 10,000 gold will allow you to reset the perks of one of your professions. I'm gonna be resetting foraging and I'll discuss why overnight. The rest of the day is spent doing chores and preparing myself for a long adventure away from home. That's not entirely accurate. I will be home most nights, but the farm is definitely not gonna be my priority in the last week of spring. I've also now unlocked that area in the sewers so I can jump into there to grab the dark pendant as well as catch a slime jack. The talisman is gonna help us unlock even more of the world, and the slime jack is gonna put us one fish closer to being a master angler. And since it's raining, I decided to go check out this challenge bait in the river. I got access to it when becoming a master fisherman. The challenge bait allows you to catch up to three fish at a time, but it is challenging. The fish behaves no differently, but for every time that the fish leaves your green bar, you will lose one of those three fish. That includes on more challenging fish as well, like catfish, and this one pretty much got away from me immediately. Well, that's fun and all, but I want to go to Ginger Island. I'll see you tomorrow. Because I reset my foraging skill with the dog statue, overnight I'm able to pick new perks. Instead of going down the gatherer path this time, I'm going to be going for forester to increase the amount of wood we get by 25%. Then for my level 10 skill, I'm going to be grabbing Lumberjack so that all trees have a chance of dropping hardwood. I'm not going to be relying on foraging for money at all anymore, instead using it to gather resources which are going to build us things to make even better money. There's still so much to do. So what do you feel is more exciting on the morning of day 21? Is it the fact that we have more cauliflower juice ready, or is it the fact that our lightning rods have finally produced us battery packs? Speaking for myself, after waiting for like 20 days for a couple of battery packs, I'm gonna go with those ones. As it turns out, I'm just shy of the amount of hardwood that I needed, so I head up to the tree farm to harvest that. Fortunately, I have been fairly diligent about planting down my mahogany saplings, so I have five trees ready to chop down. Also, yes, the mystic tree did grow up, and I intend to put tappers on these for mystic sap. We'll come back to that. It is just past five o'clock, and I am finally ready to go see Willie. Oh, actually, hey Shane, what's up? Do you want a salad or some crab cakes, man? Be my friend. I finally get down to the beach, and uh, of course Willie's shop is closed at five. I know this. Well, I guess we're not going to Ginger Island today. Fine, so I just head back up to the tree farm to fill in as many tree spots as I possibly can. I want the wood, I want the hardwood, might as well plant it. On the morning of day 22, I have to wait for Willie's shop to open, so let's go check out the bookseller! I'm definitely convinced that whatever's going on in my brain is both a superpower and a curse. Don't worry, I'll stop getting distracted eventually. I make it down to Willie's and we can submit everything that is required to repair this boat. And it's gonna be repaired overnight. Uh, I guess I'm getting a little tired of walking through all this clutter, so I'll clean up the cinder sap forest. Like I said, I do need the wood and it just feels good to clean up this environment a little bit. On the morning of day 23, it's sunny, it's beautiful, and it feels like sailing weather. Lewis informs us that the flower dance is tomorrow, sorry man, don't care at all, and Willie lets us know that his shop, because the boat is repaired, is now open at 8 a.m. Also, you may not be able to see her in there, but my house is upgrading to the next tier. Having Willie's shop open an hour earlier is gonna be so nice for our Ginger Island adventures, so of course I get super distracted on the way down, turning up at 10.30. Similar to the bus, we do have to pay Willy every time that we want to go out there, so I pay the thousand gold fee and off we go. Ginger Island was added in the 1.5 update to Stardew Valley, so I have played through it once before, but only one time. We take our first steps in this tropical island paradise and we're kind of greeted, I guess, by Leo, who screams at us and runs into the bushes. Leo, come back, friend! I want to be your buddy, guy! While chasing Leo down, I encounter the first of the golden walnut bushes. 
after of course getting distracted and cutting down all of the fiber because we do need fiber. I head into Leo's treehouse where he's hiding in a spot that I cannot get to him. I can give the golden walnut that I got outside to his parrot companion and this triggers the progression of Ginger Island. I was kind of hoping that my parrot might have some kind of fun interaction with the other parrots, but nothing that I've seen so far. There are now parrots spread around the island that will accept golden walnuts to unlock even more of the island. Also, as you step back onto the beach, there's this little flame spirit that's gonna guide you towards the mines. In total, there are 130 golden walnuts spread around the island, and there are various ways of getting them, either through exploration or through tasks. I will not be showing all of the golden walnut locations though because I have enough to talk about. This mine does not behave like the Stardew Valley or Skull Cavern mines. Instead of going down through a bunch of procedurally generated floors, you're instead going up through 10 floors that reset daily. Be sure to bring your watering can though because you need it to get across some of these lava lakes. While progressing on Ginger Island is now going to be my primary focus, I will not be completely ignoring our farm, especially on the morning of day 24 when our entire strawberry field is ready to harvest. Then it's back out to Ginger Island where I continue mining. I'm not aiming specifically for ore, but I feel like the mine, especially with how equipped I am right now, is definitely the fastest way of getting a few more golden walnuts. In this mine, there are a total of 17 walnuts available, five from breaking rocks, five from killing enemies, five from breaking metal crates, one from a common chest, and one from a rare chest. The common chests are spawned randomly throughout the floors, and then the rare chest is always at the end. There are also mini puzzles in this mine, like having to activate switches to open the gates. Like I said, don't forget your watering can because you can't get through this dungeon without it sometimes. The ninth floor is always the last floor, which will lead you out into the volcano's caldera. Here we find the anvil, which is going to allow us to do some pretty cool stuff. We can combine our rings to effectively get four ring slots instead of two, but even more exciting, we can forge and enchant our weapons and tools. It uses cinder shards as a reagent, a resource exclusive to this mine, to add diamonds and prismatic shards and oh, all kinds of things to your weapons. Different items give different effects while the prismatic shard gives enchants. The enchant is random and on my first go I get vampiric. This gives us a 9% chance to regain some of our health when we kill a monster. Cool, but not the one I'm going for. At the end of the day I head back down to the beach to make our next golden walnut purchase. For 10 golden walnuts, I'm unlocking the west side of the island, where arguably the most important stuff lies. Including, oh yeah, you see it correctly, another whole farm we can use. The rest of the day is spent exploring and collecting more walnuts. Feeling only a little bit torn between worlds, on the morning of day 25 we're back on the farm harvesting. More strawberries are ready, more cauliflower juice is ready. The greenhouse, by the way, just continues producing all the time. And yeah, I'm trying to get through these chores as quickly as possible because I want back on that island. Easily one of the most challenging golden walnut puzzles is the Simon Says Crystal Puzzle. The crystals light up and make a noise and then you have to try and repeat the pattern. Seems easy enough, but it actually gets pretty intense at the end. Anytime you fail, the puzzle starts back from the beginning. After failing a couple of times, I decided to cheat. What can I say? I record all of my footage, so why don't I just watch it back really quickly and see what the order was? Oh yeah, great success! First try! I spend the rest of the day unlocking walnuts and I want to start preparing this farm. I still need more walnuts to unlock the farm, but clearing it out now isn't gonna hurt anything. I spend the entirety of day 26 doing exactly the same and it's time to unlock that farm. For the low low cost of 20 golden walnuts, we now have the second farmhouse unlocked. I then spend the rest of day 26 fishing because there are 5 walnuts that you can find from fishing. On the morning of day 27, I want to try and organize myself a little bit. A recipe that we unlocked with the mining mastery was the mini forge. Another nifty thing added in 1.6, so now I don't have to go all the way out to Ginger Island in order to enchant and combine my rings. My rings are going to be an iridium band combined with the burglar's ring, and then a slime charmer's ring combined with the napalm ring. We now glow, have magnetism, do 10% more damage, we're immune to slimes, and when we defeat enemies, they blow up. Tell me what part of that isn't amazing. On top of there being a couple of golden walnuts left in the mine, I'm also gathering a bunch more of those cinder shards. More cinder shards means more enchants and more tool upgrades. 
And suddenly, after what felt like an eternity of waiting for those battery packs, we're on the last day of spring in year two already. Our final strawberry crop is ready to go, and once our kegs are done with the cauliflower, we have a lot of strawberry wine to make. To the point where including my plans for the summer crops, we're gonna need more kegs again. Then, no surprise, it's back out to Ginger Island where it's actually raining today. On rainy days on the island, a gem bird will spawn in one of the four quadrants of the island. North, south, east, and west. That gem bird will drop one of five possible gems, which is part of a puzzle. Right next to Leo's treehouse is a puzzle with four pedestals. We just got an emerald from the west part of the island, so this goes on the west pedestal. We'll either have to wait for the next rainy day to find out what the next gem bird is, or we could just randomly guess at it, but I'll wait for now. I then continue collecting and spending more golden walnuts, unlocking the dig site next. I did it this way because the farm is going to give us a lot more convenience, while the dig site unlocks a lot of opportunity for more walnuts. Well, soon it will anyway, I guess my pickaxe can't break this pile of rocks. We'll come back in summer with bombs. The rest of the day is spent hunting walnuts, and I finished off by doing a bunch of fishing, again looking for walnuts. And with that, it's time to turn in for spring of year two. It's a strange month where I feel like I didn't quite progress as much as I wanted to, but we have definitely laid down a solid foundation for the coming months, including all of those resources that we mined up. The next big farm egg expansion is definitely in the works, but you'll have to stay tuned for that. I want to extend a special thank you to all of those generous enough to support the channel through YouTube memberships, Patreon, and Super Chat. Your generosity makes this content possible for everyone out there to enjoy. From the bottom of my shell, thank you so much. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. Watching all the way till the end and your engagement helped my channel so much. So if you feel like I've earned it, consider leaving a like and comment about the run, what you'd like to see in the future, or just to say hi. Hey there. If you'd like to keep up with my future releases, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to never miss a video. I always have plans rattling around up here, so stay tuned for those. Until next time, take care everyone.